Okay, so much ado about is made about needle selection. Okay, we've already covered springs. Springs and needles have a symbiotic relationship. Needles and damper and oil have a symbiotic relationship. So we will see that selections need to be made in a certain order. So we start with the spring and then we move on to the needle. The last thing we look at is the damper and oil. And that will become clear as we go through. So, on to the needle. Believe it or not, all you need to know is in that book. So I urge you to buy yourself a copy from Berlin Fuel Systems um, because in there it will detail um, basically uh, the ins and outs of how it works and, and even gives you ideas about where to, take, uh, where to uh, adjust needles um, and where to take it from, okay? So the important thing to understand here is you need to understand what's going on uh, and why you need to change needles and where you need to change needles in terms of their sizings. Looking at the good book, it gives you little pictures uh, so you can uh, understand what's going on uh, and where the, the calibration points are on the needles. If you look through the book, the first thing you'll understand is it looks frightening because it's just full of tables of diameters of needles at different needle stations, okay? So that, at the moment, is not what you need to worry about. What's important for you to understand is that the way the needles are made, and it gives you a nice description in there, choosing a different needle, okay? Read that description, and it even tells you in there what points that you need to consider when you're adjusting and modifying needles for more performance. And one of the most important things in that book is the graphs. So forget the, the diameters of the needles, it's the graphs. Because that tells you where and how sensitive those needles are and those jet surface area changes are, which makes the carburetor work and it makes you understand why sometimes these things are so very sensitive to changes in needles and they're also the reason why uh, off-the-shelf needles potentially are not going to get you anywhere near where you need to be. Okay let's first uh, think about the jet and needle and what's that all about. So jet wise we've just got a hole okay so that in the in the HS4 carburetor that we've been dealing with uh, is 90 thousandths of an inch in diameter. Okay, so that's a big hole, but the way the SU works is it has a needle which sits inside it. Okay. So the needle is a bias, so it has a needle which sits inside it, okay? So the needle is a bias, so it sits over to one side. And effectively, blocks up that hole, all right? Now the beautiful thing about the SU is, it's actually a variable jet because that jet size there on the outside and the needle on the middle, that's only that size when the needle is in any, in any one particular fixed place. So if we lift the needle, if we lift the piston with the needle in it out of the jet, it now becomes much smaller. And of course, what that means is our cross-sectional area revealed now here is much larger. So actually the SU is a variable jet, variable cross-sectional area jet. So at high speed when the piston's up the needle diameter is small and the cross-sectional area is large. And conversely, when you're idling, and the piston's down, 
the needle is very large. And that, as you can see, effectively blocks the jet. So the only part of the jet that we've got left is around the periphery. So that cross-sectional area is now much smaller. And that's how the SU compensates. When the throttle's closed and the piston's down, the needle is wider and it closes off the jet. So that 90 thou jet is nothing like that. In fact, at idle, it's probably only um, sort of six thou, maybe, six and a half thou of uh, jet, um, of cross sectional area of the jet presented to the airstream. So that reduces the amount of um, fuel that the engine's taking in. Now, all you're doing when you're calibrating the needle is basically adjusting the size of that diameter that's blocking that jet orifice. The only problem with that is this system is very, very sensitive to airflow. And there's a good reason for that. And it's all to do with the uh, mathematics and the geometry of cross-sectional area of that jet and uh, the amount of fuel that can flow out of that available cross-sectional area. Now, some of the biggest problems people have is, tr is um, uh, selecting needles and they have no idea how the carburetor works. And you have to use these charts really to understand what's going on. So if we look at this chart, which is uh, for a 90 thou jet, which is the one we've been talking about, and we look at perhaps an area where it says, the next four dimensions are these govern the pickup in top gear from about 20 to 50 mile an hour sir, and also part of the need which meets the fuel for part throttle or cruising conditions. So if we look at say position three, now I can tell you by experience that is a critical dimension uh, for um, part throttle work. So if we look at on this chart, where it says 0.3 and we look at the diameter as it says there that gives an example it's 0.82 or 0.082 that's 82 thou diameter so if we go to that chart what this chart actually means is for every thousandths of an inch change it gives an indication of the cross-sectional area change in jet so if we go to 82 thou, that's not halfway, that's probably 82 thou, which is about there, and we move up, we will see that's approximately 11.5%. And what that means is, if your needle is 82 thou, and you, rem you uh, change the diameter by just one thousandth of an inch, you're effectively changing the jet surface area presented to the airstream by about 11.5%. So that fuel is going to get approximately 11.5% richer. Now, if you compound that, because this is the same jet that's in an inch and a half carburetor as it is in an inch and a quarter carburetor. So with an inch and a quarter carburetor, you've got a much smaller bore, so you've got much less air going in there. But effectively, that still changes the jet by the same amount. So effectively, the smaller the carb gets with the same size jet, the, the uh, much more sensitive it becomes because 11.5% cross-sectional area change in a HS2 carb, for example, uh, will make a huge difference to the fueling compared to the same 11.5% change in a HS4 carb that's got a lot more air flowing. So what this basically means is the smaller the carb is, the much more sensitive the fuel changes become. So just to put that into perspective, let's look at a scenario. Um, here, I have a spreadsheet. Okay, so what this spreadsheet shows for a needle size of 84 thousandths, um, if we simply uh, reduce that diameter at that same station 
uh, to 83 and 8 tenths. So that's removed just two tenths of a thou. You will see the calculation there in the uh, bottom right shows a jet change of 3.21%. So that's a 3.21% change in cross-sectional area. Okay, just from two tenths of one thou. So you can see that this becomes very, very difficult for the fueling to be made um, absolutely perfectly uh, with, with the, without the need for some very delicate adjustments of the needle. So, what does it mean? Well, effectively, the further up you go up the thick end of the needle, the more sensitive it becomes. So when you're down at the thin end of the needle, you need to remove a lot of material, reduce the diameter a lot to make a very small change. When you're at this end of the needle, the tiniest amount off the needle makes a huge change, okay? So one of the problems that people have, uh, and one of the things that a lot of uh, tuners even do, is they stay away from modifying this area of the needle, okay? So when you see me doing custom uh, needles, it's because I'm focusing on this end of the needle. And this end of the needle is where all the nice drivability comes from. So the problem is, it's very, very easy to ruin the fueling and make the engine overfuel and bore wash because of this sensitivity issue. So why don't we just change a needle? There's hundreds of needles in the book. Surely there's a needle for every application. Well, you'd be surprised, there generally isn't. So, the problem with needles is, and the way they're produced, is that all these needles are produced to a tolerance. So, let's look at, say, an AAC needle. And if we look at these, at these uh, calibration point three, You'll see there it says 0.0835, so that's 83 and a half hour. The problem with that dimension is uh, these needles have typically got uh, a tolerance of plus or minus three tenths of a thou. So in reality, that could be 838 or 832. So that's a six tenths wide band. Now. If we've already determined in that previous experiment or in that previous example that uh, two tenths makes a three percent change on the example given, well, if it's a six tenths wide, then actually uh, that's three times uh, the size. So in reality, that tolerance uh, would would actually mean there could be a nine percent variation or thereabouts. Uh, on the jet cross-sectional area, just on the production. So no, if you buy 10 needles of all the same specification, so in our example AAC there, uh, in reality, you would get a variation on the production of those needles, and some needles would be a lot leaner, and some needles would be a lot richer at these lower, lower uh, points. And that's the reason why some cars run better than others because the tolerances are so tight on the fueling uh, that it's impossible to make them uh, using conventional machines at a sensible price to be able to actually uh, produce any kind of um, uh, fueling which is repeatable. So therefore, you need to find a needle. Now, if you look at another needle, the problem with the other needles is they've all got different sizes. So if you look at that there, for example, AAF compared to the AAE, I use both of those. <coughs> the problem with that is that AAF, <coughs> although looks richer, a little bit richer at, uh, at 0.3, is actually a lot richer. And the reason for it is, is because it's, why it's uh, a larger diameter at 0.2. And what that means is, in order to get the engine idling, you have to wind the jet down further. And so the step change between that position and that position is much greater. So that there becomes a lot richer than that one. 
at that point. And these are the things that you have to understand when it comes to uh, choosing needles and making selections. So the reality is changing a needle uh, very rarely gets you anywhere near where the fueling needs to be at part throttle because the adjustments are so varied on the tolerances and the requirements so tight that in actual fact uh, the best course of action to get that fuel in perfect um, is to modify the needle by polishing. And by modifying, you can actually get a tenth of a thou or two tenths of a thou off a particular position. So that's why you see me, when I try and calibrate a carburetor, uh, I use the polishing method because it's much more repeatable and I can actually get the fuel in exactly where I need it at the uh, low um, throttle openings and the cruising positions and that's how I actually get my fueling right. Now, how are you going to do that? Well, that's up to you. So, we've seen that the uh, requirements and the accuracy needed for those needles at the um, small throttle openings is very, very precise. Uh, so if you look at a typical hair on your head, that's about two and a half to three thou thick. Uh, we were talking about two tenths of a thou. So, you know, we're not talking about dividing it by three. Don't, we're talking about dividing it by 30 or, you know, at least 15, 20 times thinner than a human hair. So that's the sort of adjustments that you need to be able to do or selections of different diameters that you need to be able to fit into your SU to be able to make any kind of sensible adjustment to the, uh, the, the nice running of that car. Now, obviously, I've just focused on the, uh, the part throttle running. Um, this video is not about uh, explaining which um, RPM, RPM points respond, um, correspond to needle stations. Well, unfortunately, that's different for every application, different for every engine. Um, that's why uh, I offer training courses for people who want to know how to tune these carburetors because there's a lot more going on than you first think. Okay, so as I said, I've, I haven't covered the uh, full power positions, but that, that is basically further down the needle. There's also progression. Um, there's effectively far too many things uh, to cover in a simple video. So what I've basically done is given you the basics and of understanding effectively uh, the needle uh, conundrum of how you can choose that needle. So the other thing to understand is what you're choosing when you're looking at a needle is effectively steady state running, okay? Or when the carburetor is operating uh, and the needle is in a fixed position, or Another way of putting it is when it's under constant depression, okay? So nothing's changing. The problem with the SU is people call it a constant depression carburetor. In fact, it's not. It's a variable depression carburetor because when you open the accelerator pedal, you get the effect of the um, damper, which we'll cover in the next episode, and that causes a temporary enrichment. Um, and that's also calibratable. So. What I'll do is I'll leave it there for this particular uh, episode and we shall move on to part four where we will look at dampers and oils. As ever, please like and subscribe and thank you very much for watching.